Well, hello, good people. We're back with another Leonardo AI video. And today we're going to cover their canvas editor, which covers in painting and out painting. Now there's a lot of use cases for a feature like this, and I'm going to cover some basic ones. One of the things that I find is very useful is you're able to expand your image beyond what you've generated. For example, this image here on the right, I really like this image, but I want to expand the image more to show more of her body. And you'll also notice that this generated some great eyes, but the mouth can use some work as well. You can access the Canva editor here. If you click on this icon here, it says edit in canvas. Simply click on this and you'll be directed to the canvas editor. Or if you happen to have previous photos that you generated, you could simply go to your personal feed here. If you click on the three dots here, you'll have more options. And as you see here, we have edits in Canvas. Now let's talk about the user interface. On the top right here, you can zoom in this way by clicking on the plus or minus signs, or you can use your scroll wheel as well. Here you could pick between Stable Diffusion 1.5 or 2.1. We're gonna use 1.5. And the usual settings on the right in terms of image dimensions, aspect ratios, guidance scales, all the usual stuff. On the left, you have some simple options here. The hand is to pan, or you could even hold Alt or Option, whichever platform you're on. I tend to use Spacebar just because I'm used to it from programs like Photoshop. That allows you to move the workspace. You have your select arrow here, your draw mask, which we will use in a second. Erase, upload image. If you want to upload an image and work directly from an image, you can do that too. And then you have your download option. Just below you have your undo, redo buttons here. And obviously we have our prompt area at the bottom and your negative prompt area and your generate button. Now you'll notice this box here. Now if I change this to 768, that box becomes bigger, but I encourage you to work in smaller spaces just so that you'll probably use less tokens this way and you'll generate things a lot quicker. The first thing I wanna do is see if we can get a better mouth here. It almost seems like the teeth and the mouth are kind of merged here. Now there's a couple ways I can approach this. I can use the whole box if I wanted to, generate another image hoping to get a better mouth. Instead of doing that, this is where the mask is very helpful. And this is their version of in painting. This slider is to bring the brush size up. As you see on the right of it, the cursor of the brush is getting bigger. So I'm gonna use a size about that size. And we're gonna isolate just the mouth area. And then I'm gonna delete the rest of the prompt here just to simplify it. And if you hover over the generate button, you'll see that it's gonna cost you one token to generate that image. Let's go ahead and click that. Now we have a better version of the mouth. This time it's a closed mouth. But as you see here, it says one of four. Let's take a look at the other images. Okay, this one's showing a little bit of teeth, which is not what I want. This one, it seems it's got more saturated lips. Oh yeah, and this one actually looks much more natural. So the first one or the fourth one, I think I'll go with the fourth one. So this is a great method to touch up portraits or characters that you might be developing. For example, I can mask out these earrings and get a different style if I wanted to. Let's click on accept because we like those results. Now let's take a look at out painting. At this point, what we want to do is click on the eraser tool, and then we're going to erase parts of the picture here and on the side, since we're going to expand it a little bit and pretty much at the bottom too. Let's focus on the top area and a little bit on the right side here, just to give her a bit more headspace. One thing to keep in mind, it's always good to have as much detail as possible on this side of the square. Like if I were to generate an image like this, chances are you're not going to get what you want. But you want to give the AI as much information as possible because it's reading not only the prompt, but the image at hand. Let's go ahead and generate this image. Okay, there we go. So we see that it's expanded the sky and the hair, which looks really good. It looks very seamless. Let's check the second one. There we go. Yeah, this one has added more of a blue sky and more kind of details to the hair. Same thing here. And that's the fourth image. I kind of like the first one. Looks a lot more cleaner, so we'll accept that. 
Now to keep things consistent, I'm going to follow this line here and then we're going to expand at the bottom. Let's hit generate and wait for this one. There you go. That one didn't take too long. Yeah, it looks great. There's the first one, second one, third one, and fourth. They all look really good. I think I'll go with either four or one. Yeah, let's go with this one. We'll accept. And now we're going to add towards the bottom. My goal here really is to get like a half body portrait. Let's generate this portion of the image. There we go. Let's check out the second one. Yeah, I think that one looks pretty decent. Or the fourth one. Yeah, let's go with number four. Now, out of curiosity, I'm wondering what will happen if we use a 1024 by 1024 square. I'm going to go ahead and generate that. That costs five tokens, <laughs> but it may be well worth it if it can fill in the image the way you want. Personally, I like to do it in little sections at a time, just so you can be more specific and more accurate. So this is one of the downsides of doing it this way, where you may develop other people or unwanted images, but we can easily crop this or erase this area. But for the most part, like if we were to cut this here, yeah, I'd be happy with this image. Let's check the other ones. There we go. We have these random people there. And part of that too is because I have uh, people in the prompt. So I'm going to try it again, but let's take out the beautiful hippie woman and just leave professional portrait, photo, and photorealistic. Okay, there you go. That's much better since we've taken out the people in the prompt. Since I'm happy with this, I'm going to download this image here. And then I'm going to pop on the screen the cropped version in a 8 by 10 type of ratio so that you can see the final image. Okay, I get it. I get it. Most of you are thinking, forget the damn portraits. Everybody can do that. Okay, well, let's do more of a cityscape, but our focus is this Porsche concept car. I've gone ahead and prompted the image. I'll leave the prompt in the description below. Let's bring it into the canvas. And basically what I want to do is add a bit more of the cityscape in the picture. Let's see if we can fix the headlights first here. So let's select the draw mask tool and we're just going to cover this area here. And this one as well. For the prompt, I'll just put in Porsche headlights and we'll click generate. All right, there you go. Let's take a look at the next one. That one's a little better. That one, not so much. Let's generate it again. I wasn't too happy with those four. There you go. Those ones look a little bit better. Not the best in the world, but I'm just going to go with it so we can move on and we'll leave the logo for now. Let's work on expanding the right side of the image first. And I'm going to put the last portion of the prompt with the wet city streaks, photorealistic, all the environmental words. Let's go ahead and click generate. Okay, there you go. And as you see, it's extending the image beyond the original aspect ratio. Let's take a look at the second one. Oh, I really like this one. It's a little warped here. That one's nice, but what is this weird thing here? Only generated two images. Why is it? Oh, I only had two images selected. Let's try that again. But this is a great way to create, let's say, wallpaper art for your desktop. Or if you have an existing image that you want to build around, this is a great way to do it. So I like this first result. Yeah, that looks really good. Second one's good too. There's a third version and the fourth. Hey, that's cool. It's got a little, got something going on there. I do like this one. So we're going to accept that. So we're just going to fill in this area here. Yeah, it's not perfect. That one can work too. Oh, there you go. I like that one a lot. And that one, yeah, no, doesn't work. <laughs> Let's go with this one. So at this point, I just want to add a little bit more to the top. I'm not sure if I want more at the bottom. There we go. Yeah, that one looks okay. That one's a lot better. That one's okay. Yeah, let's go with the second one. Let's accept that. And then we're going to take care of the other half. There we go. Let's check out the images. I'm still getting this weirdness. We're going to accept it. But now what I'm going to do here is use in painting to see if we could get rid of this here. Everything else looks pretty decent. I mean, it's not perfect, but let's see if we can get rid 
of this streak here. And maybe we can fix this area as well. Not bad, at least it's getting rid of that streak. That one shaped up a little better, especially over here. Okay, yeah, there we go. We're getting somewhere. So I would go with this one. We'd probably have to do more work over here. I'm just gonna accept this one and call it a day. So here's the original image that we started with and then the version that we created with outpainting. Now, if you haven't already checked it out, make sure to check out this video on training your own data sets in Leonardo AI. As always, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.